Hi everyone, uh, I'm Doshi Kwang from Yonsei University, Seoul, Korea. Um, it's very um, nice to be here, and I'd like to thank for I thank uh, IPAM and organizers for <coughs> inviting me to this great workshop. My talk today is about how to accelerate MR imaging using a deep learning based MR image reconstruction and contrast conversion. <coughs> the last year I attended International Society for Magnetic Resonance in Medicine conference held in um, Toronto and in that conference uh, what was interesting to me was um, the plenary lectures that was given by uh, the global uh, MR, uh, the vendors, uh, G and g and Philips and Canon. Uh, in their plenary lectures, they all emphasized about artificial intelligence and deep learning. And these deep learning techniques is their key or core engines to advance their machines. The Philips as well emphasized the AI techniques will revolutionize their uh, ML machines and also Canon emphasized the, the AI, AI technology to the medical image analysis as well. So, so there is no doubt that deep learning techniques will give a tremendous effect uh, on the medical um, imaging uh, device manufacturers and also the doctors and the, the patients as well. I've been working on this deep learning technique development as well for the medical imaging for a few uh, for a couple of years. Um, the way I see about the medical imaging in terms of the application of the deep learning can be categorized uh, the three components. The first one is the image generation. The first, the MR image should be uh, generated through the acquisition and reconstruction and also some artifact corrections. So the deep learning techniques can play a very important role for this step. And after the images has been generated, we can do a multiple analysis such as segmentations and feature extractions. The segmentation has been a very difficult task uh, for, for, for long times, but uh, since uh, the advent of the deep learning techniques, the segmentations gets very robust and can be uh, applicable to the routine um, uh, the medical examination. And also after uh, we, we can do this um, multiple analysis using the deep learning, the finally the doctors can make the diagnosis by themselves or the AI can do some diagnosis work uh, for some applications. So all these three components can be helped and uh, benefit, get, uh, can get the benefit from the deep learning techniques. I have been privileged to have uh, the good uh, cooperation, collaborations with uh, the medical doctors, the radiologists at the uh, Severance Hospital uh, near, uh, close to the Yonsei University. And, we, um, and, and I want to acknowledge uh, their help and and this in collaboration to make the, this deep learning technique development. Today, I will focus on this generation part. Dr. Kamilov and the, the two previous speakers yesterday already explained uh, some parts of the medical imaging and also the MRI. The MRI uh, is one of the most powerful medical imaging modalities but the weakness of MRI is it's a speed. The acquisition time of the MR scanner is very slow compared to other competing medical imaging modalities such as CT and X-rays. And the, the reason why the MR is slow is because the MR does not generate this nice looking image instantaneously when the patient goes into the scanner. Instead, they acquire the raw data, which is the the Fourier transform version of this image. And this raw data it has to be acquired sequentially or line by line in this uh, frequency domain or the K space. So that's why uh, the speed of the MR scanning um, is low. 
And then how can we uh, speed up or how can we accelerate this ML imaging? Uh, the one solution is uh, the undersampling. Instead of fill the, the whole case space, uh, we can skip some of the, the lines of the, this case space or we can acquire only parts of this case space. If we acquire only the half of this whole uh, case space, then we can reduce the total scanning time, say, from 20 minutes to 10 minutes. If we can acquire only the quarter of this, the whole case space, then we can reduce scanning time from 20 minutes to 5 minutes. That will uh, produce tremendous effect on the doctors and for the hospitals and for the patients. Yep, so it comes to the topic of the undersampling and the ill posed problem that we have been talked about. The question is can we generate this nice looking image from this undersampled data? The answer is yes. So this question, uh, this, uh, this has been studied for many years in the name of the compressed sensing. So uh, from this on the sampled version of image, which has been aliased or which contains some artifacts, throughout the mathematical formulation, and we, first we can transform this image into some specifying domain and then apply some L1 minimization or famous uh, total, va total um, uh, variation constraints, then we can obtain this nice looking image. Or some other researchers uh, tries to the low rank matrix modeling of the local case based neighborhoods and can give, produce the, these nice looking images. And these are the conventional uh, compressed sensing, the reconstruction. Those reconstructed images look pretty good and I love it. But when I ask the doctors about uh, this, uh, the quality of the images, sometimes they do not like uh, this style of the images because it may contain some artificial um, appearance such as piecewise uh, the features or to uh, the, the small details are over smoothed etc. And the reason why uh, the image may not be completely natural to the doctors is because we are imposing some um, the regularization that uh, may be biased to uh, the human thinking, the total variation or uh, too much the smoothness constraint that may not be the, the natural. And for the last two years, the deep learning techniques uh, gets in and played a very um, significant improvement uh, in generation the ML images. Uh, instead, uh, instead of using the conventional compressed sensing techniques, we can replace them with um, these deep learning neural network structures and let neural network learn the relationship between this undersampled version of the image with the, the ground truth image. Then um, this network can learn uh, the reconstruction um, the strategy as well as the regularization term. Yesterday and today, uh, Dr. Kamilov and Dr. Unser and Dr. So uh, introduce the theoretical backgrounds about uh, this, how this deep learning um, the works in terms of the image reconstruction. And today, I, I hope I can give another perspective on these deep learning techniques. And that perspective is about the domain. We can construct deep learning neural networks and train them in different domains. The first one is on the image domain. We can construct the networks and train uh, the relationship between this image and the, the label image in the image domain <coughs> only. Or we can make the neural network that works on the case-based domain or the sensor domain. Or we can combine those two. We can, com we can ex uh, use the, all the benefits of image domain learning and case-based learning and get them into uh, one framework of the neural networks. Or we can 
construct the neural networks that receives the, the case space on the sample data and directly generate the full sampled image, as you can see here. So depending on the applications and depending on um, the preferences, we can choose or we can use the different domains because each domain has their the pros and cons. For example, image domain learning, they they work on the image domain, and that means we, we can use um, the various techniques that have been already uh, developed by uh, the mm, computer vision community that works on the natural images uh, to extract the robust image features, and we can use the artifact removal routines or the denoisers. So that is very powerful, uh, the resources that we can apply for to the uh, ML image image construction, and that's the benefit. But the cons is this neural network receives the distorted input, the distorted image. So once uh, the image has been already distorted, it may be difficult to resolve those artifacts. In contrast, if we work on the case space learning, then the input is on the sampled case space, but the data itself, we can consider it, uh, some parts of the data is undistorted, and some parts is just completely missing. So we know which one is true and which one is not. Okay? So I think that's the benefit of working on the case based learning. In image domain, if you look at, if you receive the distorted image, then everything is distorted. We are not sure which one is right and which one is wrong. Okay, so that's the difference between image domain and the case based learning. But the cons is um, we cannot interpret this case space. So if we see this image, then we don't know what this image is. That means we cannot use the, the uh, already developed uh, those spatial features in, for the image reconstruction. The mixture of image domain learning and case space uh, domain learning, so we can use the, all the benefits of the image domain and case space learning, and that's the pros, but the cons are the is the complexity is a little bit higher than the other uh, network. And the last, the, uh, the sensor to image domain mapping, which is the, the automat. And this works pretty well. And this, this does not need any uh, for the problem. But the con is uh, its complexity is way too high. So, uh, at current implementation, as far as I know, uh, it is applicable up to 128 by 128 images, which is very low. Okay, so there are pros and cons, all these uh, the domains and the methods that uh, we can use for the deep learning training. So we can categorize our deep learning based ML reconstructions depending on these domains and also uh, a little bit different point of view, we can categorize this deep learning, um, the fast MR techniques, uh, depending on whether the deep learning network uses the Ford model or not. If the deep learning model uses the Ford model, then and, uh, the reconstruction problem can be formulated as the minimization problem with the Ford model, and that can work on the image domain with data consistency, or it can work on the hybrid domain. Uh, using the image and case-based domain altogether. Where if the deep learning network does not use any Ford model, then that can be considered as the, the direct mapping. And th this direct mapping uh, can be done on the image to image, or the case-based case-based, or the case-based to image. And in their framework, uh, th any Ford model that relates to uh, the, the sensor domain, that image domain, um, does not play at all. It's just uh, the deep learning learns everything. A little bit of math. Okay, why is the data 
that we measure and X is the, the, our image and A is the forward operator that may contain uh, coil sensitivity or Fourier transform and the K space on the sampling scheme. And if we use uh, the forward model, then they can be formalized uh, formulated as this uh, minimization problem with the regularization, regularizer, and it's uh, of course if since we are using the dim learning, it can be considered as dim learning based regularization term. If it does not use any forward model, then we don't need to express uh, our formulation in the equations. Okay, uh, with the minimization with uh, the regularization. Uh, the recent work, uh, the variational network, which was published, I think, the two years ago, and they used uh, this kind of formulation. The first is data consistency and the regularizer term. And this regularizer term has been expressed to, in terms of the, the dim learning scheme. Uh, it's a convolution kernel and the activation function. And those convolution kernel parameters and the activation function can be learned from um, the well-collected training data. And, and this variational network uh, done by uh, Hemerick et al. Uh, gave, uh, resulted in the very successful the result on many uh, different um, the acquisition schemes. And another work, the deep cascade network and model-based deep learning scheme also follows the similar the formulation with a slightly different uh, representation of um, the regularizer and they all uh, gave uh, the good results. And also, uh, the dual domain or cross domain approach, kicking at or the model based deep learning muscles, uh, since they are using <coughs> the image domain and the case based domain in their reconstruction, they put um, this regularized term in the image domain and also the case based domain as well. And also, uh, they, since they are using the image domain and case based domain, the strategy how to use uh, this domain can be uh, sequential, uh, as in the Kiki net, um, or it's uh, the simultaneous learning uh, can be possible in their work as well. If we use the direct mapping, and this is just a representation of how this uh, direct mapping neural network works, and, and uh, in fact, th we don't need to express the exact um, the mathematical formulation for this case. Uh, the DPI, deep parallel imaging net or uh, multi-layer perceptron parallel imaging, um, the study, they receive uh, the, the undersampled input image and produce the, the full sampled um, the output image. It's a direct mapping. They do not use any uh, the forward model. And auto map, as I explained, also uh, the network learns everything, including the domain transform. Um, so they do not need any specific uh, default model. And the last one, last direct mapping is from the K space and K space. And the last year, very recently, Han et al. published about this paper. Uh, so the, basically, the deep learning um, based MR reconstruction can be formulated as um, the case based uh, interpolation and they showed very successful results on that. So uh, we can categorize and we can understand um, these uh, dim learning techniques in many different point of views. And the rest of the time I will uh, share the results that we've been worked on um, that works on the, the dual domain and some of the, uh, the direct mapping. Uh, deep learning network can work very decently either in image domain or case to case based domain, domain depending on how they train, how they use the network. But from my point of view, uh, it could, it will, it, it would be uh, more beneficial to use both domains since we, uh, we can use uh, the advantages of each domain. So uh, we worked on this, the dual domain approach. And we named it as the Kikinet. 
the K represents the K space and I represents the image space. Since we are using these both domains, we named it as the KikiNet. And the mathematical formulation uh, can be understood in this way. For the, um, the image domain deep learning, we can understand the reconstruction as the image restoration with data consistency. So this is the, the reconstruction error term and this is the data consistency. Since we uh, train our network, that means we have to estimate the, uh, the network parameters theta k. So we can formulate uh, this x hat in terms of uh, this network output. And also the network output can be transformed into the, the frequency domain and we can do the, this data uh, consistency. Oh. And we can use another network that works on the k-space domain to do the k-space completion. So we can minimize uh, this k-space error. And since we are training our model, that means to, to estimate this model parameter, we can formulate that in this way. And all together, we can summarize uh, the whole procedure in this formulation. The network, network structure-wise, that can be visualized in this simple uh, representation. Um, this network receives the k-space input. Since the k-space, uh, the input data is basically the complex value, so we split this k-space data into the real data and the image, imaginary data, and then concatenate them and and put them into uh, this the convolutional neural network. And those input data goes through the convolutional network with ReLU activation function, and they generate uh, the full sample diversion of the real and imaginary, and all together gives the full sample diversion of the k-space data. And the similar network can be used in the image domain, and we slightly added these uh, skip layers to improve the, the training performance, but the mechanism is pretty much the same. And this image domain network and case-based domain network can be uh, applied alternating fashion. For example, uh, the first, the case-based learning, and then the image-based learning, and then that transformed into, into the case space again using the, uh, the forward model, and then go through these steps again in the iterative fashion. From our um, experience, and two iter iterative sets of this process would be enough to reach the uh, saturated performance. So we named it as KikiNet, the K space learning, image space learning, and K space learning, and image space learning, that would be enough to reach uh, a de decent result. I skip the details and I want to share the intermediate results of this uh, network. Okay, this is the full sample diversion. And it shows this very detailed structure and if we do not anything else, such as uh, the regularization, then and the crude reconstruction using zero filling reconstruction shows that the original structure has been distorted a lot. If we use the case-based learning, then some of the original structures has been restored, but it's very blurred, it's not good enough. And also this case, also somewhat uh, re uh, restored, but not good enough. If we use the image net, then the features has been <coughs> restored more clear, uh, clearer than the case-based net, and for, this, for example, in this case as well. But as you can see here, this kind of artifact still remains in the INET. We can, we can see those aspects if we uh, use IIII INET, which is the multiple of the, uh, the image space learning, then uh, we can retrieve the original structure much better than the previous case. Okay, but still, uh, those uh, structures are not good enough. And also, if you look at these parts, it still keeps these the clear artifacts in these uh, image domain outputs. But if we use the KKKKNet, then um, this structure is not the clear, but it does not intrude severe artifact. So 
this result suggests that if we use the image net only then and then the the once the image has been distorted severely it would be very difficult to retrieve the original structures but the case space does not um, introduce that um, the manifest artifacts and Finally, if we combine these INET and KNET all together in the alternating fashion, then we can retrieve original structures pretty well without any um, the clear the artifacts in the image. And this is the another example. This is the full sampled version. And if we use the zero filling reconstructions, then those structures destroyed a lot. But if we use the the kiki net, and then we can restore this detailed structure pretty well. And this is another example. And this last figure, which is also in the paper, also suggests uh, this the kiki net, the dual domain approach, can uh, restore the detailed details of the original image pretty well. But I want to point it out that uh, we have to be very cautious when we use uh, the deep learning techniques. Because if I, I mean, to me, uh, it, this, one, this looks good, at least to my students. But uh, when I examine this structure, it's kind of, the shape is a little bit distorted. Maybe due to the aliasing artifacts or uh, some <coughs> other the complicated um, uh, the mixture of some error terms uh, resulted in this artifact. So uh, we have to keep working on to improve these um, deep learning techniques to, until we find um, the very stable and accurate results. Or we have to use, uh, we should not go very high the reduction factors. That means we have to acquire uh, at least a certain amount of data to um, guarantee that uh, we can uh, generate um, the reliable, um, accu uh, accurate images. Anyway, uh, since I've looked at these results, okay, there are there is still many rooms to improve, even using the deep learning techniques. So the next uh, the step is. And the, we went to the next step. Um, the, based on the Kiki net, uh, we incorporate the domain transform learning technique. Um, and my students called it is a DOTA MRI. It's a somewhat uh, the hybrid space. It's a between case space and the image space. All right. I introduced this automate concept. It receives the case space data and Network learns everything, including the domain transform, such as the Fourier transform, and to produce uh, this image, which is good, I think, and it performs well. But as I explained, the complexity is too high because they have to learn the Fourier transform itself using these fully connected layers. Each point in the case space that has a uh, of effect on every place is in the image domain. Say they have so they have a lot of nodes and the connections. So that adds up to the very high complexity. So it is not applicable to our uh, the case. At least for example, the normal resolution, standard resolution, two fifty six by two fifty six. This approach cannot uh, be uh, applied. However. Uh, if we examine this sampling strategy, which is called Cartesian, the sampling scheme, we can look at this problem a little bit differently. The Cartesian sampling is very robust, and it's the, the most widely used uh, sampling scheme in the clini clinicians and in the research wide, and it will be the dominant, still dominant uh, sampling scheme in the future as well. If we look at this, the Cartesian case-based sampling scheme, we can notice that undersampling happens only in this direction, which is the phase encoding direction or KY direction. We always acquire full sampled case-based data in KX direction or X direction. So 
technically we do not need to learn about this kx and ky uh, domain transform the learning we can only uh, we only have to learn the transform domain transform learning on this ky direction okay. once we apply uh, the analytic uh, Fourier transform or inverse Fourier transform in this direction, then this space, it's a mixture of uh, k-space and uh, the spatial domain. Okay. So if we develop or if we develop the domain transform learning at from this domain, then we can reduce the complexity a lot. So. Um, our the proposed network works in this way. Uh, from the undersampled k-space data, which is the Cartesian sampling, we apply the 1D Fourier transform and set up the fully connected layers to learn the domain transform from the 1D Fourier transform to the 1D the image. In that way, uh, it can be applied to high-resolution ML images. So this is the whole framework. Input case space on the sample data, apply 1D Fourier transform, the, which is the uh, analytic transform. And this fully connected layer does the domain transform. And we add the Kikinet concept in here. Uh, the before this fully connected layer, we add this convolutional layer that kind of works as the case space learning. And we put another convolution layer after uh, we convert the k-space data into the image uh, domain, then that works as uh, image domain learning. So all together can be framed in one big network and we can train end-to-end -end fashion can, and then can uh, reduce the, the output image. And this is the, the result. So this is the full sample to label image. And if we um, use the, the 1D analytic um, Fourier transform and the convolution, the, the K-net, and the fully connected domain transform, and the convolution net that works on the image domain, then as you can see, uh, th this is basically a zero field um, the reconstruction. All this gray matter and gray matter and white matter deline delineation has been degraded. And also these two, um, the gray matter structures are merged together. But they, uh, those features can be uh, restored pretty well in this uh, the framework. And this is another example. Uh, the redux reduction factor is 5. That means only 20% of the data has been acquired. If we apply the zero filling uh, reconstruction, then um, uh, this is a full sampled image, full sampled case. The, all these detailed structures has been degraded, in, as you can see here. But if we use this, this um, the Dota MR framework, all these details has been recovered from this zero field image into that, and that uh, also can be restored. Uh, the uh, the detailed structures can be restored in this case. So. To, so the case-based learning and image domain learning and also um, the domain transform the learning using fully connected layer can make a significant uh, improvement in this uh, undersampled ML image reconstruction. All right, this is another example. And the what's the next? Uh, we can extend this concept to, oops, Parallel imaging as well. And what is the parallel imaging? Parallel imaging is the amount the system that uses multiple receivers, multiple coils. <laughs> Instead of using only one coil, if we use multiple coils, then we can make additional measurements. That means uh, we can use additional number of equations to solve uh, the same number of unknowns. Okay, so um, the, it's it's very beneficial, and this parallel imaging technique has been used for uh, the the fast imaging for many years. 
but uh, in uh, but in this parallel imaging as well, we can do, we can do the um, the undersampling strategy to further accelerate the MR imaging. But if we do the undersampling in this case as well, then uh, the 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 zero filling uh, reconstruction gets blurred and it will contain the artifacts. So we try to uh, develop deep learning network that works on this parallel imaging system as well. Since we have to deal with multiple coils and multiple measurements from the different coils, we have to uh, construct the different uh, networks. For example, if we have n channels, then we have to construct uh, the n individual um, the deep learning networks, okay, and and that works individually on each channels, and then this each uh, deep learning network can extract uh, these uh, individual features that is specific to the each coil, and after uh, these networks extract the feature maps from the undersampled um, the image from each <coughs> coil, then we can combine those features all together and concatenate and then run through the reconstruction, the convolutional network. Then we can obtain the final, um, the fully sampled version of the image. And in this case, we also added some skip layers to uh, for the residual learning. So this concept um, is the multi-stream CNN. Instead of using only single stream CNN that includes every the coil data at once, uh, we developed the individual networks and, and framed as the multi-stream CNNs to emphasize the, each individual uh, the feature extraction. And in that way, we got the good results. Okay, I will skip the, the details. And here is the, the image that we, we got. So this is the full sampled image. Okay, and if we do the undersampling for this parallel imaging, then the zero field reconstruction loses these kind of vessel structures. Okay? But if we use the multi-stream network using the deep learning, then we restored uh, this missing the vessels pretty well in this case. Right here is the another example. Uh, this is, uh, we, we compare the, the conventional methods and, and even the unit structures. But uh, if we use the, the, the multi-stream strategy of the deep learning, then we can retrieve those structures and those vessel structures pretty well compared to the others. Right, this is another example. Okay, and I will, I will skip those. All right, so, um, the conclusion for this parallel imaging is so we can develop the multi-stream network and that can lead to the better reconstruction compared to uh, the single stream or other uh, the conventional methods. Right, and, and what's the next? Uh, um, the next topic is the the, we, we, we try to apply our deep learning techniques to do the parameter mapping in MR, which takes uh, the longer time than the other um, the acquisition of the images. What is the, oh, by the way, this work has been done to my graduate student, Johan Jun, and so I want to give him the full credit of, uh, for this work. So what is the parameter map? Uh, this is the typical MR images, which is the weighted images, but in, uh, in the, the tissues inside our body has some the specific parameter, which uh, depends on the MR physics. And for example, if we acquire the MR images for this, the single slice of the brain, then as time increases, a certain pixel, or uh, the, the MR signal from uh, the fixed the position in, in that corresponds to some specific tissues, they decay, and that decay follows some decay constant, and that is sometimes that is called um, the T1 relaxation or T2 relaxation, and that is um, the, 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 
the characteristics of the tissues that uh, respond to the um, the radio frequencies. So once we know this decay constant, then we can generate quantitative MR images specific to the certain tissues. As you can see here, this is the parameter map, a T1 map, and T2 map, and this is the, the field in, in homogeneity map. So uh, if we can generate these parameter maps, then that can be very beneficial uh, when the doctors uh, to try to make the, the right decisions because uh, these values can be quantitative. But uh, the problem is uh, the acquisition and the reconstruction takes too much time because we have to acquire multiple images to do this uh, decay uh, exponential feeding to extract the parameter maps, so what T1 values, what T2 values. So uh, there are there are need to uh, accelerate uh, this amount uh, acquisition and the reconstruction as well. All right. Uh, the, our goal is to estimate these parameter maps. Okay, and to do that, we have to acquire at least uh, two to the three different images. To, for the speed up, we can use the the parallel imaging. That means for each image, we have we can acquire multiple. Uh, the individual coil, uh, the data sets, and from these the data sets, we can reconstruct uh, each coil, the multi coil ML images, and using the coil, sensi coil sensitivity map, we can combine those multi coil data into a single um, the magnitude images. And once we get these three uh, the magnitude images, we can um, apply. Uh, the signal feeding model and to get uh, this ML parameter map. So it's a big complicated procedure. And now to, uh, to, do, to accelerate the ML imaging, we want to do uh, the undersampling on this space. Then uh, our whole uh, the problem can be formulated with this, uh, the forward operator, which, comes, which goes from this ML parameter map, or T1 map, or uh, T1 and uh, T2 and um, the protein density map into this on the sample multi coil to space. So it's very complicated. Um, since it's on the sample, it gives uh, the earliest image, and do we have to combine those image, uh, multi coil images into single, uh, the magnitude images, and all they are um, uh, aliased and corrupted. And from this, uh, we, ha we have to estimate this parameter map. So the whole problem gets very complicated. If we simpl simplify the problem, then and the problem uh, can be formulated like that. And the big picture about this, uh, the reconstruction can be formulated in this way. Of course, uh, the uh, data consistence should be uh, added. and and the regularized terms uh, that should be used uh, to produce um, the right solutions. Okay, from our undersampled data, so this is the, the whole framework of the deep learning. Uh, on, from the undersampled data, we apply the zero field, uh, the reconstruction, so that gives uh, distorted um, uh, three different images and th this coil sensitivity map gets in play w when we combine those images. Okay. And we apply the CNN-based mapping. So from these three different images, which is the earlier version, uh, we can uh, learn, train our CNN uh, network to produce this T1 and M0 map. So this is more like a direct mapping. And then, but uh, this map will contain some, uh, um, some artifacts as well. So uh, we developed another CNN-based reconstructions. And we iterate uh, this whole the procedure uh, throughout uh, the supervised learning concept. The key feature about this implementation is how can we uh, implement a data consistency layer. It's very hard to do that because it's all uh, the, all the procedures are very complicated. So what we did is we uh, developed some model-based this layer. Uh, that means after we estimate this T1 and M0 parameter map, we 
take all these core sensitivity map and uh, on the sample data and also the, some additional information about the, the B1 in homogeneity map to produce the, the right uh, the parameter maps. And then the work on this model-based, this layer space uh, using this signal model as well and then compare uh, uh, our estimation and with uh, the data, the measurements. And then we apply the, the gradient uh, descent methods to update our uh, the solution, and then we do the do the iteration. Then we can get uh, uh, the good result for the parameter mapping. Okay, here is the result, and this is the full sampled image, and this is a zero, zero field, and and this uh, it, it gives very biased ver biased estimation about the parameter maps, but. Uh, using our framework, we restored, restored the original uh, parameter maps pretty well. And without the, this layer, uh, some artifacts may happen because uh, it does not satisfy the DC, uh, the con data consistency condition. All right, it's almost the time. All right, and this is the results. And, and this is the zero field. Uh, the, uh, the parameter map based on the zero field reconstruction, and and if we use our framework, we can restore the very the detailed uh, information about the parameter maps, and we, which is done. And this work was done on the reduction factor of the five. So only twenty percent of data has been acquired in this case. Right. I, I have uh, five more minutes, and. I will spend that on the, just to introduce the concept of the, the contrast conversion. This, this is a slight different approach to accelerate ML imaging. When, when we do, when you go through the MI scanning, the doctors prescribe a certain set of the protocol uh, to uh, acquire um, the very different uh, contrast images. For example, T1 weighted image and T2 weighted image and, and gradient recalled um, uh, image uh, and also the, some fat suppressed version of the image which is called the stir image. I mean, all these four sets of data are routinely acquired to make a right diagnosis by the radiologist. So the whole, um, the scanning time adds up. There's a two, minutes, 39 seconds, and three minutes, and three minutes, and this stir image takes four minutes, 38 seconds. So we, we want to accelerate this, um, the scanning protocol. Uh, one way is the undersampling method that I explained so far, but the other way is uh, let's do not apply the undersampling scheme and just estimate the one of these images out of three different images. So that's the concept of uh, the contrast conversion using dim learning. So uh, instead of acquire this image, uh, we generate this image from the other contrast images. Because uh, anyway, uh, these three images has to be, have to be acquired. So we can develop um, the deep learning neural network. Of course, uh, this network should work on the image domain. The, we, we developed the three different networks and then combine them. And then the, the result is we, uh, we can get the, the decent um, the stir images uh, without actually measuring, acquiring the data. So this is the example of the result. All right, this is the knee image and this is the acquired stir, stir image and this is the, 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 the learning the produced by the dim learning image. As you can see here, uh, these, uh, the stir image features uh, are well kept in this dim learning version of the stir images. So the doctors evaluated these images and they gave uh, uh, the 4.81 the score out of five, which is pretty good. Uh, the quality in terms of the making the diagnos diagnosis decisions. And furthermore, since we are using three different contrast images, the signal-to-noise ratio of these deep-learned 
store images is much better than the actual acquisition of these store images. So um, this study suggests that the store sequence can be omitted from the knee scanning, but still can be generated from other routine contrast with results in significant reduction in the overall MR scan time. And this is another way to accelerate the MR images. All right, um, I have to conclude. So in summary, the MRI is very slow, so it requires long scan time, especially MR parameter map. And, but we can accelerate MR imaging using deep learning, um, the based MR reconstruction oops, through the image space learning, or case space learning, or cross domain, or direct mapping, either using the forward model or without forward model. And we can apply that into the parallel imaging and parameter mapping as well. And also, we can accelerate the MR imaging in a slightly different ways the via the contrast conversion. And our future work is to combine this under sampling scheme with this contrast conversion to further accelerate the ML imaging. So eventually we can reduce the scan time, so reduce the patient discomfort and artifacts and cost. And also these techniques can be, uh, have the potential to be extended to various MRI applications. Okay, and that concludes my talk and I would like to Thank all my graduate students and the collaborators at the Severance Hospital and my university, uh, the Yonsei University. Right. Thank you. Thank you.